historically, monasteries have been the repository of the Dharma, both in terms of people and in terms of Dharma scriptures and statues and space where people could come and practice. So the role of the monasteries and of monastics is to uh, embody the Dharma, study it, practice it, teach it, make it so that the Dharma can exist in future generations. Yeah. So I think that's something that is, is uh, quite important that one individual alone can't do. Okay? So for example, if I were a lay teacher, if uh, people had difficulties and they needed counseling or they were distressed or they needed some special teaching, if they came to my home and uh, rang the doorbell and said, can you help me? You know, uh, maybe I would be holding, you know, a baby and there'd be a crying toddler and my husband would be around and I'd have to say sorry, you know. And uh, whereas in a monastery, there's a physical place where people in the world know that they can go when they need counseling, when they need teachings, when they want to go on retreat, when they, they need that inspiration. And by having that physical place, then even people who don't come here benefit. We get so many emails from people uh, who have never been here who say, thank you for existing. It's very inspiring for me to know that there are people who are consciously cultivating love and compassion and wisdom in today's society. People are so grateful just to know that there's a group of people in a place that is doing that, that gives them hope and inspiration for the world. Also, I think mon monasteries act as the conscience of society in many ways, okay? Because here's a group of people, we live a simple lifestyle, okay? We aren't doing business, selling things, buying things, try, you know? We ha our economy is an economy of generosity. We give freely, people make donations to us, they give freely. So. It, it asks society, you know, is really all this thing of trying to make a buck really meaningful? Yeah, do we, you know, here are these monastics who wear the same clothes every day, yeah, and they don't have sex, and they, they don't, you know, they're, they're not watching Netflix all the time. How can they be happy? And yet we look at them and they're happy people. And so it makes, you know, general society think what, what really is happiness and what really is the cause of happiness? You know, I'm trying to find happiness by climbing up the corporate ladder, by getting more possessions, by going here and doing this and that and having one exotic thing after another and gazillion boyfriends or girlfriends. But here are people who don't have that and they're happy. How is that? So it, it's a question. It, just by the existence of monastics in a monastery, it poses that question about the need for material goods the need for everything modern life has become. Also, a monastery, yeah, at least many of them, I can't speak for all of them, try and be places that are kind to the environment. Yeah. And people come here and they say, I thought I recycled a lot, but I look at what you people do and you hardly throw away anything. And they come out 
really feeling like, wow, you know, there's more I can do in terms of recycling and reusing, okay? We try and not drive so much, you know, instead of just, okay, I want this at the store, go out and drive, you know, or I feel like going here or there, go out and drive. It's like we try and put a lot of errands together you know, and then people go out when it's necessary. And so, you know, it, it poses that to, the, to society also. Uh, what, uh, how can we be kinder to the environment? What can we really do in our lifestyle? 